But Interglobe Aviation has reported very strong numbers in the first quarter, beating street estimates across all parameters. The revenues rose nearly 30%. It's an all-time high on revenues and profitability. Let's listen in to Peter Elbers, the CEO of Indigo, in conversation with Shireen Pan. Peter, let's start by talking about the, the standout quarter that you've been able to deliver on. The question, though, is, uh, is this sustainable? Are you going to be able to replicate the kind of margins which have come in at a record high of almost 31.2% record revenue as well as record profit? In terms of demand and in terms of the external environment, will you be able to redo this performance? Well, in, indeed, this result uh, for this quarter has been actually a, a wonderful and very, very strong result. And a lot, of, a lot of things were coming together in this quarter. And if you take a little bit of a step back uh, at COVID, we had pretty much 10 quarters of consecutive losses. Uh, and um, by the end of, uh, actually by the middle of last year, as from the third quarter, we're back into profitable, uh, profitable territories. So now for three quarters in a row, we're back into black black numbers, black figures, uh, and this quarter obviously has been the highest one from the three. And what we see really is a combination of two factors. Um, firstly, we see a very strong uh, demand in the market. The Indian economy is growing, Indian travel is, go is growing, visitors are growing. So a very strong market demand in India does not only have one of the, the fastest recoveries post-COVID in the world, but also a very solid demand going forward. The second factor really which is helping us is that we have launched a whole range of initiatives last year and we see that all these initiatives start to pay off. We've seen significant amount of capacity being squeezed out of the market. Uh, you know, go first. Uh, there is no clarity on when it is likely to relaunch. There is no jet airways at this point in time. SpiceJet is facing its own set of troubles, as are you on the supply side. But how much of the capacity constraints are actually aiding you at this point in time and what could that potentially mean in terms of market share addition? I think we prefer to look at Indigo at what we can do and, and how we are able to help uh, the market with the capacity what is needed. And since we had the first challenges in the middle of last year with some of the supply chain challenges forcing us to take some mitigating measures, we've been very, very consistent actually in meeting our capacity guidance We've, we've given a, a guidance for last year. We've met the guidance even slightly higher. We've given a guidance for this year and the call which we had earlier uh, today, the North mid teens are just repeated. So what we have in, actually in place at Indigo is a whole range of mitigating measures, some extension of leases. And uh, we are, of course, um, in a situation whereby we do have a steady flow of aircraft coming in. To your question on, on go first, yes, the, the, the suspension of go-first flights in, in early May created, of course, some certain, uh, certain market disruptions and dynamics. However, I should say, after a couple of days, you see that things are, are, are stabilizing. And for us, for the 400-plus domestic routes we're flying, there was like 15 to 20 percent of these routes were also operated um, uh, by Go First. So the actual overlap on our on our on our network was was limited, I should say. The the majority of the growth what we're seeing is really the growth of the market. And if you just compare today's market numbers to that of the situation uh, before COVID, we're actually significantly higher. And for us, year over year, we almost had a 30 percent growth in terms of passenger numbers. So that's really new market. And, and we keep seeing, and that's one of the, I would say one of the strongholds of Indigo, we keep seeing a lot of first time flyers uh, in our aircraft. And the, the very strong government policies in promoting air travel and making sure that smaller communities have access to air travel, that's really uh, supporting the growth of aviation in India itself. But Peter, you know, you talked about GoFast, and, and, and I would like to address the, the rumors and uh, reports appearing in, in the regional press that suggest that Indigo might be interested in GoFast. Is there any truth to that at all? Indigo is focusing, again, I'm, I'm not reacting to any rumors, but Indigo is focusing on develop uh, our own company. We have a steady flow. I mean, even before we placed the most recent mammoth order of 500 aircraft, we already had 470-ish aircraft yet to be delivered. So we're in a strong position to build our company and build our brand. And that's really our focus going forward. 
Uh, Peter, you know, uh, let's talk about some of the challenges that uh, you need to contend with as well. And I know that you addressed this on the investor call. So I'm just trying to get a little more clarity from you uh, on the Pratt & Whitney recall aspect. Uh, in the first phase, Pratt & Whitney has announced that starting September, they will recall about 200 aircraft globally. Now, you've said that that will impact Indigo uh, in single-digit numbers. Uh, you already have 40 aircraft grounded currently. So starting September to perhaps the end of the year, which is part of the winter schedule that you have to factor in, what will be the operational fleet size? What will be the grounded fleet? Yeah. Well, today, and, and we, we said we have the high, in the high 30s of AOGs, and today I think we communicated that, that we're having around 40-ish aircraft, um, which, of course, is driven by the supply chain. In addition, uh, and that, that number is actually pretty stable over the, over the, past, uh, the past time, um, that most recent announcement uh, of the first batch of 200, I mentioned a single number, or single digit number actually, for Indigo, so that, that for, the, for the weeks and the months ahead will not have a, a very significant impact. Those are the numbers we, we can deal with within our capacity guidance. And, and again, today, even for the full year, we have repeated our capacity guidance of the North mid teens So we don't know yet precisely what's going to be the, the next phase of the, of the Pratt um, um, uh, inspections to take place. We don't know precisely what's the impact of that. We will work closely with Pratt whenever we have more information, whenever we get more information. We would like to be totally transparent. That's why we shared in our investor call whatever info we have, we share there. I think it's important to be transparent. Um, and, of course, we are working like we did last year. Let's talk about the other challenge. And, you know, it's, it's actually uh, been a better environment as far as crude is concerned, and you've seen the benefits of that play out for you in the quarter gone by. But we've now started to see crude prices inching up, and that's resulted in ATF moving higher as well. Uh, how much of a risk factor uh, is that at this point in time? What are you penciling in? Well, there's, there's, there's obviously some global... Uh, fluctuations in the prices of fuel and and indigo um, of course is just is just affected by these global fluctuations and one quarter the, the the effects are positive and another quarter they could be negative so I would not be in a position to to predict or to speculate and I think I've said that before I'm not sure to you but if I were to be able to have a precise prediction for oil prices I probably would not run an airline but would have a different job um, so so we, we just follow actually here. I think in the long run, actually, we see that there's always a correlation between fuel prices and actual prices of tickets. Um, you mentioned ATF. I think what's an important element in India today is that more and more states and more and more stations actually, as part of the government policies, are lowering the taxation on, on, on the ATF and, and aligning that. That helps a lot in order to, to make sure that India becomes more and more a global aviation hub. And we're not only looking to, to passengers within India itself, but even passengers traveling to and from and via India. And more and more we're building uh, that connectivity and that connectivity system. And that in itself will also help us to mitigate some of these fluctuations in prices which take place anyway. One of the concerns is that there is a crisis of confidence within the lessor community. Uh, how are you reading that? How is that likely to impact agreements going forward? Uh, you know, are, are we already starting to see that being penciled in as far as security deposits are concerned, change in uh, uh, agreements at this point in time? How do you see this playing out for India in the medium term, given the current environment? Well, I think we should, we should probably make a bit of a differentiation between What's, what's the trend in the direction and what are our actual situations? And the trend in the direction of India is that India will, will grow as an economy and India will take a even more prominent place on the, on the global stage um, as we basically see uh, that growing by the day. With that, the Indian aviation market will continue to grow and actually whatever prediction uh, you follow and being at the IATA conference um, a little less than two months ago in Istanbul, it was all about India, looking at the air show uh, in Paris where Indigo announced its order and, and Air India did it slightly before that. Uh, it was all about the growth of the Indian market. So the general direction and the general focus on India uh, becoming such a an, an, an vibrant uh, aviation market, that is there. 
Then, of course, there's the situation around, around Go First, which we follow closely, where it's important that, that um, it's, it is matching uh, some of the international uh, standards and, and practices. Um, so I, I think it's a bit premature to now connect the two and say, because of this, that will happen again. What is important is what is the, what's the long-term perspective and how some of the, the, uh, the actual situations, which I think it's still under development, it's probably not totally, um, totally worked out. There's still some work in progress and some discussions going on, to my understanding, without being aware of all the details, which are, of course, taking place behind closed doors. I think the overall direction is clear, and, and India will continue to be uh, developing as a, as a global aviation powerhouse.